Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Shari Ahmed, Admission and Recruitment Officer at the Faculty of Arts and Science. Today, I will be telling you all about arts and science and how to apply. So over the course of my presentation, you will learn about our amazing faculty, academic programs and experiences, as well as the enormous wealth of opportunities that are waiting for you here at the University of Toronto. Now I will turn it over to my colleague, Amy, who will go over some housekeeping item before I start my actual presentation. Thank you, Shreer. Hello, everyone. My name is Amy Chang. I'm the admissions and recruitment officer at the Faculty of Arts and Science in the University of Toronto. And I have the pleasure of being the co-host of today's All About Arts and Science Getting Started session. And as co-host, I will be moderating and helping Shreer to answer all the questions that you have for us, whether it being submitting the application, admission requirements, supplemental application, you just name it. We are here for you to answer all of those questions. And speaking of questions, a few housekeeping items for everyone. So you can submit your questions using the Q&A function located below of your Zoom screen, but please be mindful that we will be answering your questions after the presentation portion is complete. And one thing to remind everyone is that please keep an eye out on the chat function as well. Mm -hmm. So my colleagues will be posting very useful links, which you can click and save for you to review at the later time. And I really highly encourage you to save them because our web pages are fully loaded with information and it will give you guidance throughout the application cycle as well. And one last thing is that today's webinar, there is closed captioning available, closed captioning is available for everyone. So you can turn either turn it on or off using the button located in the bottom of your Zoom screen. Okay, so that's really it for me in terms of housekeeping items. So I will be going off camera in the next couple of minutes while Sherrier gives us a wonderful overview about the Faculty of Arts and Science. And I'll be coming back on screen after the presentation is complete to answer all the questions that you have for us. So Sherrier, good luck with your presentation and I'll be back shortly. Bye for now. Thank you so much, Amy. All right, um, so at U of T, you will receive the best education. We understand that choosing a university that is right for you is absolutely critical. You want to choose a university city that with world-class academics, great ex student experience, as well as a great career opportunities at the end of your degree. You will have all those at the Faculty of Arts and Science. To us, best education means that you will have access to unique world-class academic opportunities, not only inside the class, but as well as outside of the class. Have an incredible experience in the center of an amazing diverse city. You will also have a degree that will set you up for incredible career opportunities. Let's delve into what academic excellence means to us. At the Faculty of Arts and Science, academic excellence means that you will be taught by award-winning professors, get involved in research discoveries throughout your undergraduate studies, and have access to a wide range of courses and fields of studies. You might be wondering what exactly does award-winning teaching look like here at U of T. It means that our incredible professors are being recognized for their efforts in inspiring students, such as yourself, make learning inclusive and more engaging. They are being recognized for developing learning opportunities, both in and outside of classrooms, as a Faculty of Arts and Science student, you can get involved in international exchange programs, spend summers learning abroad, and take courses with built-in international course module where your class will go on field trips to another countries. 
As you can tell at the University of Toronto, we take undergraduate teaching very seriously. You will be sitting in classrooms with amazing thinkers, researcher, innovators, as well as inventors. Our professors are more than just great researchers. They're amazing teachers who are eager to share their experience with you. Take, for example, Professor Ian Williams, who is an associate professor at the Faculty of Arts and Sciences Department of English. As a proud UFD alumni and an award-winning Canadian novelist and poet with six acclaimed books, his novel reproduction won the 2019 Scotiabank Giller Prize and was long listed for the Dublin Literary Award for Best Work on Global Fiction. With his renowned talent, he takes the lead in educating his readers about racism that still exists in our society today through his latest book, Disorientation, as he shares the impact of racial encounters on ordinary people. With such expertise in writing, Professor Williams shared his exceptional love for poetry and creative writing with his undergraduate students this year in a hybrid course titled Creative Writing Poetry. Within this class, he encouraged his students to explore various types of poetry, including song lyrics and rap lyrics. At U of T, teaching and research go hand in hand. That means you will be exposed to researchers who are, are bringing new research right to the classroom to enhance your experience as a U of T student. Take, for example, Professor Andrea Johns. Professor Johns completed a specialist in Indigenous Studies and two minor degrees in Book and Media Studies and Creative Expression in Society. During Professor Johns' studies, she had the opportunity to travel to New Zealand as part of a three-month placement where she completed a research project uh, about Indigenous tattoo revitalization. As a UFD student, you will have access to many research opportunities throughout your undergraduate degree. You can participate in our research opportunity program known as ROP and earn course credit. Or you can pursue many uh, positions, research positions that are available through our research opportunity catalog. And at the Faculty of Arts and Science, Academic excellence also means you have the choice and the flexibility to shape your education and your degree. At UFT, we understand that you may have multiple areas of interest. Therefore, here you can combine a wide range of courses based on your new interests to shape your education as well as we give you the opportunity to try new things, uncover new interests and abilities. When you apply, you will apply to one of the six ca admission categories. For example, social sciences, humanities, life sciences, computer sciences, Rotman commerce, as well as math and physical sciences. Your first year will be general. That means you, you will take all core courses uh, for your admission category, as well as take some elective courses from your interest areas. At the end of your first year, you will then apply to a program or programs of interest, uh, programs of programs that interest you the most. We certainly encourage you to try new things at the Faculty of Arts and Science and uncover new interests and abilities. So when I talk about flexibility and program options, we offer 340 programs. That means that you can design your own degree the way that no one else has done it before. Let's take a look at our degree options. So to complete your degree at the Faculty of Arts and Science at UFD, you must complete 20 credits in variety of subjects. 
in arts and science, you can earn a specialist degree. This is a degree type that is the greatest, that means the greatest co concentration in one subject area. And you can also earn two major degrees. That means a major consists of around one third of a total credit, which is 20. Or you can combine two minor degrees with one major degree. That is the smallest program type at, um, at with just four credits, which is minor. Now that you have seen your academic options, let's talk, take a look at the place where you will be living for the next four years. We know that university is a big move, but what will make that adjustment easier is knowing that U of T is located in an amazing city on a beautiful historical central campus filled with intimate college communities. U of T is located in the heart of the city of Toronto. When you live in Toronto, you live just steps from hundreds of vibrant communities and neighborhoods. Toronto is one of the world's most diverse cities in the world. In fact, half of Toronto's population was born outside of Canada and speaks languages other than English. The city is safe, clean, delicious, and has something for everyone. Just a few facts. 47% of Torontonians were born outside of Canada. Over 200 spoken languages and dialects, over 130 film festivals, over 7,500 restaurants, 1,400 public parks, 1,400 uh, sorry, 1,400 public parks, 400 live music venues, as well as 300 kilometers of trails. Sorry. Um, and right in the middle of this amazing city is U of T campus, a beautiful green oasis. Because of our location, your education does not just end inside the classroom. It spills out of campus into surrounding neighborhoods. For example, if you're interested in life sciences, the Toronto Academic Health Science Network is just short walk away. More than 55% specialist and 35% of all family doctors in Ontario receive training at the University of Toronto and one of the affiliated hospitals. If you're interested in business, Canada's largest financial district is right here in Toronto. If you're interested in technology, the Mars Discovery District is also the largest science and technology incubator in Canada. If you're interested in history or the art, the Royal Ontario Museum and the Art Gallery of Ontario are both within walking distance. Being right in the hub means that you will have ample opportunities to do research, internships, and grow your professional network. We strongly encourage you to register for our campus tour or our virtual campus. Our virtual campus uh, tours allows you to take a peek inside our classrooms as well as labs. Also, a big part of UFD's incredible community is the colleges. As, as a Faculty of Arts and Science student, you will, be, you will belong to a college. They are friendly and supportive community of students and scholars within the Faculty of Arts and Science. Whether you live in residence or commute to campus, you will have access to the many services uh, provided by your college, including academic support, personal support, learning and writing support, uh, accommodation for students living in residence, social programming, orientation, scholarship, bursaries, or even library services. Your college is your home based on campus. 
there are opportunities to get involved, explore your interest, and meet new people across the university. On campus, there are 44 varsity teams, 40 intramural teams, and more than 800 student clubs. All of these things, the incredible city, beautiful campus, and the college community will contribute to you having the best experience at the University of Toronto. Now let's talk about network connection. At UFT, you become part of an incredible network that support your success. During your studies, you will have lots of opportunities to make professional connections as a student. And once you graduate, your UFT degree will give you access to incredible alumni network. You might be wondering what do we mean when we say professional connections? By studying at UFT, you will have opportunities to study with other top students from around the world. Your roommate or classmate could be the next, in, next in big inventor or the future CEO of a next big company. You can also get professional connections by participating in programs like Backpack to Briefcase, which provides opportunity for students to meet and mingle and network with alumni and faculty members from their department, uh, their academic unit. And the professors and the alumni are willing to offer guidance, share their experience and career advice and encouragement. We're proud to say that your career opportunities are very good at U of T. To us, professional development is not just co-op, but we do have that opportunity for you as well. It is all about making you feel that you can leverage your skills and beyond the uh, skills beyond the classroom. And we'll teach you how to do that in a number of different ways. For example, we have opportunities for internship, work study positions, and research opportunities. So let's take a quick look at those, some of those opportunities. For example, at the Arts and Science, you have opportunities to participate in the Arts and Science Internship Program, which combines 12 to 20 months of paid work experience with specialized professional development training. You'll gain practical work experience, learn valuable career skills, build your professional network while being fully supported by a dedicated internship team. Participating in an arts and science internship program, you will explore different career options that best fits you. At the University of Toronto, the degree does not train you to for one particular career. It prepares you for many. All of these great professional connections and professional development opportunities will lead you to a diverse career options, no matter what you are studying. Now let's go over how to apply. The first step to get you ready to apply is to visit our website to make sure you have done your research. We encourage you to visit our how to apply webpage for step-by-step -step information on how to apply for depending on uh, if you are a high school student, transfer student, second degree, part-time, non-degree, etc. You can also join our upcoming online event and activities and register to attend to get any of your questions answered. Once you have completed your research, you are ready to apply. The application to the Faculty of Arts and Science is completed in three steps. In step one, you're submitting your application through the Ontario University Application Center website, also known as OUAC. The application for fall 2020, uh, 2023 is available the step you will take uh, will take about 15 to 20 minutes to finish because it is simply um, biographical application. If you're a current high school student, you will be completing the 101 application. If you are not 
um, if you're residing in Ontario, but not a high school student or international student, you'd be completing a 105 application. If you're an international student who is only interested to apply to the University of Toronto, you'd be completing the University of Toronto, Toronto um, international application. Once you completed your biographical information, you will be choose, choosing um, the, one of the uh, admission categories, as well as uh, you need your top three college uh, preferences. Once you submit your application through the OUAC, about a week later, you will send uh, you will receive an email with instructions to enable your join UTOR ID and log on to join UFD. This is your applicant website at the application website at the University of Toronto, where you will complete the second step of the application. It is important that you activate your uh, portal so you can track your application status. For us to assess your application for admission, you must complete your application by submitting all the required documents listed in your Join UFD portal. We encourage you to complete your application early as programs uh, are filled on an ongoing basis. Please note that for computer science and Rotman commerce admission categories require supplemental application form uh, for admission consideration. If you select one of these two programs, you will also have option to indicate whether you want to be considered for an alternate admission category in case you do not receive an offer to your first choice. Please note that Trinity College as well as Victoria College also have college profiles that are required for 101 uh, students to submit uh, in order to be considered for membership to their college. We encourage you to check your UFD, join UFD portal regularly for updates and to submit your required documents as early as possible for admission consideration. We hope you found this webinar uh, helpful. If you are interested in turning into more webinars like this, uh, please be sure to visit our website to join us for upcoming chats and uh, and uh, other um, information sessions. You can also scan the QR code to find all our upcoming events. If you have any questions, please join us for our web chat or book a one-on-one -on -one video appointment. Amazing. Thank you, Sherrier, for the great overview about our Faculty of Arts and Science. This is a time for you to take a sip of water, coffee or tea, whatever that may be, because we will be answering questions. And throughout the course of the presentation, we got so many great questions. So let me know when you're ready, Sherrier, and we will begin right away. I am ready. <laughs> okay. Perfect. So the first question is, I applied on the 22nd of September and have not yet received my login information yet. Could you possibly give me an estimate estimated time when I'll hear a response back? That's a, that's a fantastic question. Uh, the, um, and thank you for submitting your application. Uh, you have not heard from us uh, or received an email uh, regarding your join UFD portal yet because uh, our uh, central admission office has not started sending those um, acknowledgement emails, but my understanding is that they will be sending uh, soon. So once they start sending uh, those emails, uh, you can expect to receive uh, an email soon and following the instruction, you can activate your portal. Perfect. Thank you, Sherrier. And I believe the pre-acknowledgement emails have also gone out already. Just to acknowledge that we received your application through OUAC. So please stay tuned and keep an eye out on your email. We will, as Sherrier said, we'll be sending out an acknowledgement email, which you will have access to the Join UFD portal. All right. So our second question, we actually got a lot of question about this. I think this was a great one to answer live, is if I retake a course, is there a preference to it being retaken online or real life? And I think you can also touch base upon just a reminder of how we look at the repeated courses. 
Sure. Yeah, no, that's another excellent question. So when we are reviewing application, we are, it is, it is absolutely in, um, it's critical to ensure that the course that you are taking is an Ontario, uh, uh, it's, um, it's recognized by Ontario, whether you take it online or during um, day school or night school, that that's not the main focus. The focus is that it's a legitimate uh, Ontario, uh, Ontario cur curriculum course. So you as a student, when you're enrolling in a course, um, I strongly encourage you to make sure that the course is recognized before you sign up for any course. Thank you, Sherry. That was a great answer as well. <laughs> And just a final reminder as well for everyone. I know Miriam also answered this through the chat, but Rotman Commerce also does not allow students to repeat the course. They'll only look at the first attempt. So just a friendly reminder to that, to everyone. And our next question is, what type of scholarships do you offer at the Faculty of Arts and Science? Uh, at the Faculty of Arts and Science, we definitely have entrance scholarship for those um, you do not need to apply for them. Uh, you are selected based on your academic uh, performance. Uh, there are other scholarships that are available through the University of Toronto. I encourage you to take a look at the website, look at the di different criteria for the scholarship and apply accordingly. Perfect, thank you. And I'm just gonna ask my colleague in the chat to post a link to our Award Explorer. It is a great resource for you to actually find all the scholarships that we offer at the Faculty of Arts and Science, as well as just Central as well. And also please do keep in mind that when you receive the offer admission from us, you will also hear back about your scholarship as well for majority of the time. And our next question is very interesting. It says, I heard that preference is given to students that take the most challenging courses. Does that mean that taking AP courses in grade 12, as well as my prerequisites and doing well, will make my application more competitive? Also, will taking grade 12 prerequisite courses in grade 11 make my application stand out? Okay, so I will try to, um... That's a very loaded question, so I'll try to uh, break it down into yes. various um, various parts. Uh, and if I miss any, please uh, um, let me know. So when we're reviewing um, courses or your admission, um, your your grades as a whole, um, as an AP student, you you will be eligible for transfer credit. In, in terms of the difficulty of the course, as I mentioned earlier, as, as long as the course is being recognized in Ontario education system, um, that is what we're looking for. Um, but being an AP student, if you take AP courses and receive a certain grade, you will be eligible for uh, transfer credit. Um, now, um, sorry, the other part of the question was, Amy, would you go? Yes, to... it was, will taking grade 12 prerequisite courses in grade 11 make my application stand out more? Um, it, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't make your application stand out more um, because, I mean, you're taking grade 12 courses in, in grade 11. Uh, so that may mean that we may have your grade 12 uh courses, if particularly if they are prerequisite courses early on, um, because you have taken them early on, we may have the final grades early on, but it doesn't necessarily make your application more competitive. Perfect. Thank you, Shurier. Hopefully that answered your question. And our next question is about residents and colleges. It asks about residents at St. George campus, which college is the best? especially for a computer science student. So I think we can kind of break it down to explain a little bit of our college system, how despite regarding which college membership you're in, you're free to choose which courses that you want to take. We can also touch base on that and as well as some residence types as well. So um, I, I would encourage you to take a look at the residence uh, type, uh, portfolio, the, the website and read up on the residence to see um, what sort of residence style that you would 
prefer. The residents definitely, the residents community um, or the college community definitely provides a lot of services to students, uh, uh, both from social as well as academic to helping you build your uh, network and support your education. Uh, so in that sense, I can't really say one college is better than the other. It really is a very individual choice. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at um, um, take take a look at each of the colleges, read up on them, and see which one would be a best fit for you. Perfect. Thank you so much. So again, no matter your college membership, really doesn't affect which courses that you can take. All faculty of arts and science can take courses regarding our college membership. So just a reminder for everyone. And our next question is: What are the co-op work study internship opportunities in U of T? specifically at the Faculty of Arts and Science? So at the, Arts and, at the Faculty of Arts and Science, um, there are work-study positions available. Uh, so the work-study positions, uh, the focus of the work-study positions is to, um, is to expose you to real life experience while uh, you are uh, learning at the same time. Uh, you can apply for various work-study positions um, for various administrative jobs, uh, research positions, etc., that uh, come on uh, during every semester as well as in the summer. So you'd have to apply for those um, by by logging into the job portal. Uh, as far as uh, internships are concerned, uh, arts and science internship programs available. As I mentioned in my presentation, that the, uh, that depending on the course that you take, if the course is, uh, offers that uh, internship opportunity, then you will be able to um, participate in the internship um, internship opportunity. That's typically between twelve to uh, twenty weeks and, um, and um, learn from, uh, use both the, um, what you learn uh, theoretically as you can apply that directly to uh, the organization that you work for. Perfect, thank you, Shreer. And now we're back with college question again. Does the order that you rank your college in OUAC matter? For example, does it affect your chances of getting into a college if it's not your first choice? Thank you. Uh, Amy, I would uh, request your expertise on that. I know that you're you're very knowledgeable about the college system. For sure. So college ranking is it doesn't really matter for in terms of admission. It won't affect. It's a separate thing from your admission purposes. So, but then we would highly encourage you to rank them by your preference because some students have preference in terms of location and history, what kind of residence type. So I would really highly encourage you to do the research before you rank them. But in terms of admission, it won't really affect it. And also do keep in mind that some of the colleges will require you to put it as a first choice. So colleges like Trinity College, as well as Victoria College and Innes College will require you to rank them as the number one. And also Trinity and Victoria College as a supplemental application that you need to submit if you want to be considered. All right, so hopefully that answers the question. And our next question is what are the study abroad, international and exchange opportunities at U of T at the Faculty of Arts and Science? There are lots of um, exchange opportunities, study abroad opportunities at the University of Toronto. For example, uh, if you're interested in an exchange program, you will uh, speak to the uh, Center for International Exchange Office. They have a fabulous website that tells you all the information, all the opportunities that are available to you as a student. Um, the, the amazing part of participating in an exchange program is that you also get cr uh, credit at the University of Toronto for the course and the experience that you acquired. Um, I, and I strongly encourage you to uh, participate in an inter international exchange uh, program. Yeah, for sure. And as a U of T alumni as well, I participated in a student exchange program during my third year. And I absolutely encourage everyone to participate because it was an amazing experience. Just kind of sharing my own experiences there. 
I will move on right along to our next question. Since some scholarships are tied to colleges, will we, oh, sorry, I just got, I just lost a question, there we go. Since some scholarships are tied to colleges, will we get to know which colleges gives us what scholarships before we finalize their decisions on which college we choose to be part of? Thank you. Amy, again, I will uh, request your expertise in answering that question. Yeah. So basically, when you receive the offer of admission from us, again, you will be getting a notification about your scholarship as well. And you will know which scholarship that you will get. Sometimes it will be at the faculty level or at the central level or at the college level. So you will have an actual information on hand to make the decision once you receive the offer of admission from us so that you get to make your own decision, informed decision based on what kind of scholarships that you offer. So hopefully that answers your questions. And moving right along, will you accept unofficial transcript for the application process? As a mature student, I have a few, and I think sure here we can also just remind everyone in terms of how we look at the unofficial transcript for both mature students and as well as high school students. Okay. Uh, so at the time of application, when you upload all your documents, yes, we will accept your uh, unofficial uh, documents, uh, particularly your transcript. Now, uh, please keep in mind that this is at the evaluation stages. Uh, however, if you are admitted to the University of Toronto, all the official, or sorry, all the unofficial documents that you have submitted, you will need to provide us an official copy and satisfy your admission condition uh, in order to start classes here. So. Um, so yes, we will, at first, we will accept your unofficial copy, but eventually you will need to provide official copy in order to meet your admission condition. Great, thank you, Shreer. And the next question is quite relevant to what we just answered, but it asked, I'm an IB student and wanted to know if U of T considers my predicted grades or will you only accept depending on my final grades. In other words, do you give conditional acceptances? Yes, we do. So at the time of admission, if your predicted grades are available, you'll be uploading that information to, um, to the portal um, and we will review it. And if, you, um, if you're within the admission range based on your, your predict predicted grades, we will extend uh, an offer. However, at the end, we will require an official uh, grade directly from IBO to send it to U of T to meet your, uh, to satisfy your condition. Yeah, for sure. And one thing to note is that for some students, we do understand not a lot of schools will release the predicted grades directly to the student. If that is such case, you can reach out to us by email and have your school contact us directly so that we can arrange your predicted grades to be submitted directly to us. So make sure that you do find out what the school policies are and then let us know if anything. Okay, so moving right along. If you receive an early conditional offer to University of Toronto, what sort of grade would be expected to maintain at the time of graduation from high school? I'm sure it would vary depending on the program, but is there an approximate you could give? Yeah, I can certainly speak very generally about this because uh, every program, the admission average that you need to um, have um, to satisfy your condition is different, but um, in generally, I would say that uh, you need to maintain a strong average. By saying that, I mean the the around or at the grade uh, or average that we admitted you at uh, in the initial round, you need to maintain same or similar performance um, right through your right through the end uh, to ensure that uh, your spot at the University of Toronto is secure. Perfect, thank you. And just a reminder for everyone that we have around five minutes left to the webinar. So we will try to zoom through the questions as soon as possible. So if you do have any questions, please do submit them right now so that we can try to answer as much as possible. And our next question is, does my mark at the end of the first year decide whether I'm eligible to apply for a certain program or not? 
So I think we can talk about the difference between limited program enrollment programs and open enrollment programs. Yeah, no, thank you, Amy. Uh, yes, yeah, so programs that are uh, limited enrollment, um, so they would be uh, what you have to do is after you have completed the core courses of your admission category, as well as some elective courses, you will apply into those limited programs. And based on your academic performance, they would make a decision whether you would be admitted into the program or not. Now, Amy also mentioned that there are uh, programs that are not limited enrollment. For those, you would um, you would apply uh, through our internal system, uh, Acorn, and uh, and um, get get admitted into the program. Um, but uh, by saying that, I, I also want to mention that uh, we um, we encourage you to um, to do very well in your first year and maintain a strong academic. Uh, uh, performance in order to make sure that regardless of what program you choose, that you are successful in getting admitted into it. Great. Thank you, Shurier. That was a great response. Hopefully that answered the question as well. And our next question is going back to the type of application. What application should be used for Ontario private French students? Do you need a separate English testing? So I think we can go over the requirements for OUAC 101 application and 105 application who should be using it. And then the English proficiency tests that we require from students. Sure, so for 101 uh, applicants, um, your what you need for for any programs that or any admission category that you want to apply to you of course need to have grade 12 english and any other prerequisites that are required for that particular admission category in addition um you can look through the um it look through the requirements. In addition, if there's any supplemental applications required for any particular uh, program categories, you will also need to submit those. Um, your the the way it the process the way it will work is that you your school counselors will after you submit your application will send us uh, grades periodically as they become available for our admissions. Uh, Round, we will review those grades and make admission decisions based on the latest grade that you have. Um, if you, for any reason, if you are not selected for early admission, do not panic. There's still lots of time. Uh, as more grades become available, uh, we will make admission decision and update you. For 105 applications for students who are residing in Ontario but are not currently in high school, um, Everything, uh, any program prerequisites uh, that you need to follow that I mentioned earlier, those all still applies to you. But for your transcript, um, for now, you can upload your unofficial transcript, uh, your consolidated unofficial transcript. So it, cover, it has all the grades from grade nine to grade 12. If you have um, attended uh, multiple schools, you can certainly ask your latest school to provide you with a consolidated uh, transcript. Um, and then you can upload that or they can send it directly to the University of Toronto for, uh, for consideration, which would be considered official. Um, and once you submit everything, then you'll just need to uh, wait until we make a decision in your application. Great. Thank you so much for that. that was a lot of information, packed with very useful information. So we're just going over a little bit of our time. So if we don't get to your questions, please feel free to send us an email at recruit.artsci.utoronto.ca. Our email is on the slide over there, and then we'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. But we will stay a little bit behind to answer some of the questions because we love seeing these questions they are all amazing. And next question actually is quite challenging because we do get a lot of these terminology questions from our prospective students is what's the difference between admission categories, faculties and programs and what does colleges and U of T really mean? Yes, it is. It is. Um, it, it is a very loaded question. So I'll, I'll try to answer. Amy, feel free to jump in. Uh, <laughs> so, For sure. Um, 
So when we say you're you're uh, you're applying into an admission category, we're talking about think of the way I like to explain this. Let's so let's just take social sciences for example. Social sciences admission category is a big umbrella, and under that umbrella there are various uh, disciplines or programs that you may be interested in. So I'll use I'll take sociology for example is a is a is a discipline of studies or is the program that you may be interested in. But in order for you to study sociology as a first year student from high school, you need to first apply into that bigger category of uh, programs such as social sciences, so the big umbrella. So first, so think about this as a funnel. So you apply into social sciences and then after your first year, based on how, uh, based on your performance, you apply into a particular program. So it's like a funnel. So there are various programs and then you choose the ones that interest you the most and you apply. And with that, as I mentioned earlier, some are uh, limited enrollment, some are not limited enrollment. And that's something that you will know all about after you've complete your, successfully complete your first year. Um, when it comes to faculty, um, the diff, for example, um, arts and science is, is a separate faculty. Within arts and science, there are all uh, the admission categories that I mentioned earlier in my presentation, they all belong in the, uh, in the, um, in the faculty of arts and science. However, a different faculty would be faculty of engineering, faculty of music, they are a separate faculty. So if you are, um, if you are applying into faculty of arts and science uh, and you want to study sociology, you'd be, faculty, you'd be applying into faculty of arts and science. However, if you want to if you want to study engineering, you cannot apply to Faculty of Arts and Science. You need to apply to Faculty of Engineering because Faculty of Arts and Science does not offer uh, engineering program. I hope I was able to explain the difference between faculties and programs and program categories. Yes, and then just to answer that last bit there, what does colleges and U of T mean? Colleges is basically a very unique feature within the Faculty of Arts and Science. It's basically like a smaller community within the Faculty of Arts and Science, and we divide students into specific college memberships so that we can provide you with the best experience possible. So they act as like a home base. So hopefully they answer a lot of your questions because terminologies can be very confusing. So our next question is, hi, hello. I have been living permanently in the United States, but I have a Canadian citizenship. At U of T, would I pay international tuition and be considered as an international student? You'd be paying as a domestic, uh, you'd be applying as a domestic uh, student. Uh, so your application type would be 105 and um, 105 domestic. So therefore you'd be paying a domestic. Perfect. Thank you. That just answered it straightforwardly. Okay. So our next question is, you mentioned that Brotman Commerce does not consider retaking courses. Would that apply for other programs like computer science? For computer science or any competitive program at the Faculty of Arts and Science or for any uh, program that we offer, we're always looking for um, strong students with strong academic performance because programs are very competitive. Uh, so I think I will give you a general answer here uh, that um, um, in, in, in cases where if you must repeat a uh, course, then I guess there are no options. But uh, if, you're, if you received a strong uh, average and you were happy with your performance, um, then um, then I wouldn't recommend uh, repeating a course just, just because you have a personal expectation, but to, to say that uh, we're always looking for uh, strong performance uh, in your academic uh, courses. Perfect, thank you. So everyone, unfortunately, we are, we just ran out of time, but these questions were all amazing. 
If we haven't had a chance to answer your question again, you will be able to send an email to us at recruit.artsi.utoronto.ca. We promise we will get back to you as soon as possible. But our colleagues at the back end will be remaining in the chat to answer your questions as well before we move on to the next session. So thank you again, Sherry, for the amazing overview of the Faculty of Arts and Science and answering these questions. It was absolute pleasure. And I will just hand it off for you for closing remarks.